Hi friends. So great to have you with me today, whether you're here live or whether you're watching at a time that's a little bit more convenient for you. I appreciate you joining me today. And so to begin with, I'd really like to start with the breath because I believe that everything in life really does begin with bringing us back to a nice calm breath. So if it feels safe to do so, please go ahead and close your eyes and take a nice deep breath in and release. And another deep breath in and just release all of that tension on the out breath that you may be holding in your body. So today we're gonna to talk about surrender. And to begin with the discussion on surrender, I'd really like to start with what surrender is not. And surrender is not giving up. It is not just saying, oh my God, nothing in life is working for me. I just, I can't get anything right. Nothing is working. I, I, just, I give up, I give up. I, I can't, I, I just, I clearly don't know what I'm doing. So I find God, you can take it. Here you go. I just give up. It looks a little bit like that, but definitely doesn't have that same feel of the way that that just had. That was a a very ego-centered, I give up. And I'll talk a little bit about that um, as we go forward. So what exactly is surrender? Surrender is when you are, you have a desire, you have a desire for an outcome of whatever it is that you're experiencing in your life. And you put that desire out there and then you release expectations of the outcome. That is the ultimate, uh, that's the ultimate way that I can describe surrender, is just releasing the expectations of the outcome. So now that we know what surrender is, what it's not, how does that, like how does it differ between the giving up and just surrendering? How exactly do I do this? So one of the ways that's that it's done, let me take a step back. In order to surrender, you have to have some form of faith. I know that there's so many of you out there that think of church and religion as, um, is it very, there's a lot of emotion tied to those. And so it's about finding the thing that works for you. Whether you call it God, you call it unconditional love, you call it energy, you call it universal, the universe, whatever it is that you call it, there has to be a faith there. Because if there is no faith, then what are you surrendering everything over to? And the faith is really just that you have this um, understanding that there is a higher power, that, that we are all connected. So it doesn't even have to be like this idea of something above us. It's just this ex expectation that we are all connected. So everything that happens within my world is going to affect what's happening in everybody else's world around me and around the world. So releasing the expectations of the outcome says, I don't know what I'm doing. I clearly don't have everybody's interest in hand. How can I possibly know enough to know that whatever I desire is going to be for the highest good for everyone around me? Um, I've got somebody who it just keeps pausing. Let me know, Naomi, if that keeps happening. Hopefully that isn't happening for others out there. Um, so what exactly do you do with that faith? Well, what you do with it and the way that you surrender with that is that you go into prayer. And prayer can look like prayer, it can look like meditation, it can look like just calm, quiet space where you just just surrender whatever it is that you're, have, you're struggling with. And the way that I like to do that is I like to make it very literal. So I'll place whatever it is that I'm struggling with, which over the course of my life has often been my health. 
I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis in 2000. So over the years, I have struggled with the healing of my body. And I, I find things that work and then I keep going and then I get to a point where I'm like, oh my God, like I'm doing all of the right things. I'm taking all of the right steps. What am I missing? And I get really frustrated. And those are the moments that it's time to surrender. And so I will take my health and I will imagine that I'm just placing it right here in my hands and I'm just surrendering it surrendering it up to that higher power and saying you take it because I can't. I can't do this. I don't know what it is that I'm doing. I don't know what I'm missing. I can't do this anymore. Please take it. And so I put my healing into the hands of this higher power of the universe. And it's really frightening because in that I'm saying I'm releasing all expectation of outcome. I'm releasing uh, by handing this over to you, I'm releasing the idea that I may not get well, that I may not get 100% well throughout my life. But the beautiful thing about that is that when you have faith, you go, but even if I don't get well, I know that this is serving not only me, but everybody else in this world, and that there is a higher purpose for the reason why I am not well. And that's where that faith really comes into play here and how, and how, why you need to have that faith in order to be able to surrender because you need to know that you have something that has your back. Uh, one of my favorite books is Gabby Bernstein's The Universe Has Your Back. And to know and really use some of those tools that she has in the book and recognize how much the universe has my back has really helped me to feel comfortable surrendering more often. I highly recommend it. So another question that I have heard is, well, if I'm surrendering, then how are things getting done? Because if I surrender and I just give it over to God, then like, so then what? Do I just sit back and wait for things to happen? And no, of course not. Of course, you still have to be taking the action that you are, that you feel called to do in the moment. Um, I have a perfect, what I feel, feel is a very great statement around this piece. And it is, I am powerless to control the outcome, but I can control how I perceive this moment. So as humans, we, are, we have the gift of free will. So while there is a higher power, we still have free will. So in the moments that I know that I'm trying to heal, I'm releasing that control over to the higher power, I'm releasing the outcome, and in the moment that it's time for me to have dinner, I still have a choice. Do I choose these foods that I know I can feel in my gut are healthy and right for me? Or am I gonna choose something that's going to give me temporary comfort and that will probably not continue to lead me down the path that I'm meant to go down because I can feel that as well. And either way, either way is fine. There is no judgment. It's not like the universe. I mean, the universe, if you really think about it, it's all energy. Energy doesn't discriminate against anything. There's certainly no judgment there. So if you're gonna take the choice of something that is not aligned with your higher good, well, that's a choice you make in that moment and that's okay. Then you go on to the next moment, knowing that you have surrendered your plans over to God, which means, or the universe or whichever term works best for you. And that the universe is gonna to continue to keep placing things in your path that will keep steering you over into the right direction into the direction that you're meant to go in that is aligned with your highest self, that's aligned with your purpose. So I think that that covers just about everything that I wanted to talk about. We talked a little bit about what surrender is, what it's not, um, how we get it done, prayer, and the other piece that goes along with prayer, that's the piece that I'm missing, is gratitude. When you surrender it over to God, don't forget to have gratitude for all of the things that you do have in your life. So when it comes to my health, I may have like weird sensations going on in my legs, but I can still run. 
I can still go for my runs. And I may be out there like freaking out over the fact that my legs are spasming or whatever it is that they're doing, but I'm still out there running. And I can still come home and I can still hold my children and these are all things that I'm grateful for. So um, gratitude, anytime you put the energy of gratitude out into the universe, you're getting, gonna get that back tenfold. So keep up the prayers of practicing the surrender, releasing all expectations of outcome, and then feeling gratitude for the things that you currently do have. And remember again, I am powerless to control the outcome, but I can control how I perceive in this moment. That's a really powerful statement to help keep you along this path. So as we were beginning today, I had asked for some questions and one of my email subscribers reached out to me with a question. Naomi, I know that you are having trouble with the pausing of the video, but hopefully you'll get a chance to see this. Um, you had mentioned, I have goals, lists of things I'd like to do. They're not life or death matters or pressing issues. Intelligently, I know that they would help me live closer to my potential. I know exactly what needs to be done to achieve them, yet I seem to have to do the exact opposite, or if I make progress, never seem to finish. I never seem to create a pattern or schedule where I can complete them. So Naomi, thank you so much for sending out that question. And what, what I hear a lot in what you wrote is a lot of certainty. A lot of certainty saying like, I know, I know what to do. I know how, I, how things need to be handled. I know the path that I need to be taking. And I would ask you to just really compassionately question that for yourself. If, though, if you do know the correct path, the path that is aligned with your highest good, then where is that block that's coming in that's keeping you from take, making those action steps? And the reason I say that is for, there's two different things that made me think of that for you. One is, um, something that Gabby Bernstein says in the universe has your back when she says she was talking about a story for herself and she realized she got this clear message that was your plans are getting in the way of God's plans and what she means by that the way that I perceive the what she means by that is basically a full glass of water will overflow if it takes on any more water so there's no more room to receive the messages of what the next step is meant to be because you're so holding on to what needs to happen and what you know is meant to happen and what has to happen you're so hanging on to that so tight that you're controlling the way that you think that it should go but if you can release some of that expectation of the way that it might look to get to where you need to be then you begin to open up the part of your brain that is the creative part, the frontal part of the frontal lobe is a creative part of your brain. As long as you're in thought process, then this part of your brain is occupied. And so you're not receptive to creative, um, to creative outcomes and to creative ways of approaching life. You're stuck in the old patterns that you're already used to. So you're continuously on almost this autopilot of just doing the same things over and over and over again because it's what you're used to and you don't have to think about it. But if you can just step back from that autopilot for just a minute, step back from the thoughts that I know that this needs to happen and I know that this needs to happen and just get really curious about those things. Breathe into those things and let pop up what really is meant to happen. Maybe those things really do need to happen. Maybe those things that you know are supposed to happen are meant to happen, but maybe they're not meant to happen right now. And maybe there is something else that you could be doing that's better served for you and for the people around you if you just sit back and listen for what the universe, what the universe's guidance is for you. So I hope that that has served you today, Naomi. Um, that was a really, really great question. 
and um, I hope that that answered it. If you do have any further questions, you know, feel free to let me know. My husband decided to pipe up when I told him that we were going to be talking about surrender, and he said he had a question that is something that I've heard over and over and over again. And his question was, how can I surrender yet still stay in my own power? And that is such a great question because so many times we think that we are, by surrendering, then we're just giving our way our power to other people. It's almost like, well, if you're having a conflict with somebody, it's like by surrendering to that conflict, it's like you're giving into it. And this goes back to um, what I said in the beginning. Surrendering is not giving up. It is not giving in to somebody else. It is the very definition of staying in your power because you are remaining true to who you are while surrendering the outcome. So take away, just step back from what's actually happening in the moment and say, okay, so if I'm having this conflict with a person, I surrender this conflict over to the universe. I release all expectations of outcome. And from that standpoint, you can come in and then you can have that conversation with the person that you're in conflict with from a place of truth of who you are. And if they don't like it, then it's okay because you don't have any expectations of that outcome. You have no expectations of what that outcome needs to look like. You've surrendered it over to God. And so everything is just the way that it's meant to be. So it's a great question, but surrender does not mean giving away your power. Surrender just means releasing all expectations of outcome to the way that things should be. I hope that has served everybody today. I just want to go back, surrender. It's just releasing all expectations of outcome. The fastest way to get there is prayer and handing over all of your challenges to God or the universe or whatever it is that you have faith in and continuing to remain in your truth, remembering that while you are powerless to control the outcome, you can control how you perceive this moment. And if, of course, you are still struggling with these, with any of the challenges that you're having, um, I do have an intuitive coaching business, and that can be found on my website at melindaleeschmidt.com. Check it out and see how I got here. Thank you so much. I hope you guys all have a wonderful evening, wonderful weekend. Namaste.